I am about to document my live switching setup before I dismantle it and bring it on location using the Blackmagic Design ATEM Television Studio HD. There is going to be three cameras, one, two, three, and the switching will be done right here on the ATEM. The preview monitor will be used to decide which camera to switch to. The final output will then go live to the event hall's projector. At the same time, whatever is being switched will be recorded using the Mac. The whole event might run to about 4 to 5 hours. Right now, the Mac is recording to make sure that I can record for hours. Now, let's go through the detailed setup. At the heart of the system is the ATEM Television Studio HD. Right now, only two cameras are attached. The cameras are connected via HDMI input 1 and HDMI input 2. HDMI input 3 will be connected on the event itself, the third camera. And then we have one more, HDMI 4, empty. On the other end is another HDMI output. This HDMI output goes to the preview screen. This preview screen is actually a 22-inch Samsung Full HD HDMI monitor. There are four final outputs from the ATEM and they are all SDI, no HDMI. The first SDI output goes to a SDI to HDMI converter again by Blackmagic Design. The converter is powered by a regular portable power bank. Right now, I'm using a 10,000 mAh anchor power bank. The output here is HDMI which goes to an external monitor which on the actual day will be a, a projector. The second SDI output goes to the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder by Blackmagic Design which then converts the signal to Thunderbolt that goes directly into the Mac. The MacBook Pro right now is recording the video signal coming from the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. The recording is done via OBS, the settings which I will touch on later. Now back to the ATEM TV Studio HD, it's powered directly via AC. There is no on off switch on the device. So powering the ATEM is done directly on the power socket. On the actual day, this button will be turned on, which represents the audio feed coming from the main camera. The rest will be turned off and the AFV or audio follow video will all be turned off. And we have decided to use straight cut mixing instead of auto mixing straight cut meaning we get straight cuts now let's document the setup press the menu button under settings the video format is set to 1080i50 which means all the cameras must also be set to 1080i50 and that includes the preview monitor and the external monitor. So camera 1, camera 2, camera 1, camera 2. Take a look at the Mac. Camera 1, camera 2, camera 1, camera 2. We now take a look at the settings on the OBS to ensure high quality recording. First, there's nothing else but scene 1 and a video capture device source. 
Now let's check the video capture device options. There are a few options that we have to set here. Under device, we select Blackmagic Ultra Mini Recorder and then select Use Preset and under Preset, select High. Uncheck Use Buffering. Now let's check the overall OBS settings. Let's go into the settings. Under General Settings, these are, these are the options that I may have took for granted, never changed. We will ignore the stream settings because we are not doing streaming right this moment. We will instead make sure the output settings are good. On the output settings, select recording, type standard. The recording path, this is the external, external SSD drive. The Samsung 250GB SSD drive. Then check generate file name without space, recording FLV instead of MP4 so that should anything happen, we still get the file, audio track, leave it as one. Encoder, we select hardware encoder, Apple VT H264 hardware encoder, rescale output 920 times 1080. And the bit rate. I've put it a bit high, 16,000 unchecked limit bitrate and the rest is default. Next, audio settings. I have disabled every other audio input except Blackmagic Audio which is coming from the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder via the Thunderbolt. The rest of the settings are more or less default. And also I found out something. To ensure that the audio syncs with the video, I create a new video capture device every time we start a new recording and then remove the old one. So that's it. That's the documentation for this setup which I'll be using in the real life event, a four to five hour event. If you find that there's anything I can improve on, do let me know in the comment section below. Right? And uh, I will get back to you in the comments if everything works out fine. This is Adrian from videolane.com. See ya.